I am sharing my screen now. Zinavo. Tap. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Just I am taking few minutes so that the all the things. Okay. Can... okay I'm just a uh, few minutes. I want to. Uh, can you see my skin clearly? Yes. Dr. Nazmul Yes. 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 Um, so, uh, with the permission, permission of uh, Professor Bari, uh, I am just starting my session, and uh, all the participants from home and abroad, Assalamu Alaikum. I welcome you all to this basic Elizabeth of session webinar, uh, lecture nine. And uh, so far, uh, those who have attended and connected to us, uh, very. Uh, uh, known it well that uh, we have completed the history of the Elizabeth surgery. We completed all the basic component and also today is the last lecture on the anatomical consideration of the uh, lower extremity that include the ankle and foot. I am Dr. Arifud Jaman on the behalf of Bangladesh Kudgan Fellow Group presenting my papers. Uh, this is a very great uh, quotation from Leonardo da Vinci. You know that Dino uh, uh, Vinci does not need any introduction. He is the uh, biggest philosopher scientist from uh, Mona Lisa to the aeronautical engineering. All are the things uh, he explained very nicely 600 years ago. According to the Leonardo da Vinci, the human foot is a masterpiece of engineering and work of art. And today, our session is on the foot and ankle. And foot and ankle, we want to correlate the biology, the biomechanics, and the Elizabeth osteo, uh, osteo, biological osteosynthesis technique uh, in all the things in a single lecture. So let's explore the foot and ankle of human body. And uh, just uh, I added this uh, slide from a picture in the web. Uh, it is a random picture and it says the a stop for a stop for hope. And now at the time of Corona, Bangladesh uh, is uh, at the very peak of uh, infection. Uh, so far 60,000, over 60,000 Corona positive patient in Bangladesh. So uh, we are just stuck. We are just stopped, but we stop for the hope. And going to my presentation, uh, just uh, I want to give you a little idea how the human foot is. If you see the footprint, the human footprint is so, uh, so that the, all the parts are not in same plane. So that when a foot is on the ground, some part touches the ground, some part doesn't. So from this, we can get a very preliminary idea that him, all the bones and all the soft tissues and other vital structure of the foot are not in the same plane. So the basic is that when we performing Elizabeth, when we introducing the wire, we should keep all the scenario in mind so that we can get a good 3D picture and have a good, good Elizabeth fixation. Now go to the anatomical details. I divided my lecture into parts so that some parts osteology, some parts is joint consideration and some parts is biomechanics and my clinical case sharing. And if you see in the foot of a, of a human being, 
you can see that it is very well known to us the our foot is dome shaped it has the arch but the arch is so that the medial side is relatively a higher level than on the lateral border so please keep uh, this in mind that when you put the wire that then the wire would not be as vertical or as parallel to the uh, body part uh, as we have uh, told you that uh, in other part of the body we try to uh, put the all the wires in the long axis of the bones or vertical to the bones or some other consideration but here the bones are so designed that, that you have to put all the wires in a direction that can fix the all the bones and bones are not collinear here bones are bones are arranged in a different manner in foot so you should keep all the things in mind during wire fixation and what is that uh, i have um, if you follow my culture uh, you can see that uh, if you cut a bones just uh, in a coronal plane of the foot then any cut take some part of the tarsal bone some part of metatarsal bone even cutting in a coronal plane all the tarsal bones are not in same level so there is the anatomical variance variation of orientation of the bones in the foot even uh, you see that the first metatarsal is very thicker even you if you pass the wire at the bottom of the first metatarsal bone then it miss uh, it will miss many of the bones so to fix all the bones you should be meticulous and you should be directed as the anatomical arrangement is it is so now go to the another part and another part of the ankle is that tell talus is in the ankle mortis so if you want to put wire in the talus so very little part of the talus is exposed to the surface so that uh, you can put the talus without fixing the joints if you see in the lateral part of the talus that the most of the talar lateral part is covered by the articular surface which is articulate with the fibula but the medial part is more uh, exposed uh, than the lateral part medial part there is a small articular surface why i am telling this i am telling this as because both the surfaces of the talus even the neck of the talus and the exposed part of the talus is very much subjected to the wire introduction so you should no uh, i i know that you all, all know very anatomy very good but here is some little bit different consideration so that you can introduce wire very precisely and also the if you follow my culture also the uh, ankle um, the capsule um, attachment is like that it uh, through the rim of the talus i request everyone please uh, mm -hmm. unmute your yeah. microphone uh, mute your microphone okay so uh, now i um, i am going to, uh, to the uh, another slide this is the consideration of the talus during the wire fixation and i will go for the cross section of the ankle a little bit later before i uh, go to that i want to uh, focus some very basic uh, normal anatomical structure of the foot and this is the uh, longitudinal arches you know that but my uh, my emphasis uh, on this picture is that if you see in the osteology the joint plane uh, if you see the mid tarsal joint plane it is little bit oblique and you see that mid tarsal bones is a sum of triangular shape it is triangular apex is in the cuboid uh, cuboid bones and the base on the navicular and the medial cuneiform bone so if you want to fix only the uh, mid uh, mid foot then you have to put your wire in a different anatomical uh, consideration so please uh, look how the joints are arranged here and uh, I, as i have told you that the talus is mostly articular but some part of the talus is uh, is still uh, subjected to the wire fixation that how it can be if you see the uh, anatomical the artery uh, the tendons and other uh, tendon sheath uh, if you follow the lateral medullus there is some area 
of the lateral uh, of the ankle that is devoid of any important structure if you uh, follow my cursor this is even on the medial part some part of talar area is also devoid of important structure here there is deltoid ligament different layers so very little part of the talus is, uh, is exposed for putting the wires but the talar neck and the some part of the body of the talus is exposed or you can give the wire very safely uh, talar wire by through this region so i am comparing both the osteology and the soft tissue side by side and then uh, if you uh, if you visualize the foot from the ant anterior from the dorsum of the foot that is there is a line the midpoint between the two malleolus and the web space uh, first web space if you draw a line the and uh, tbl is um, dor dorsalis speed is art artery uh, is uh, in the line and the uh, width is nerves so don't put any wire in this line if you uh, if you just avoid this plane then you can avoid many important structure in the foot this is one consideration and here i just um, uh, want to simplify the foot uh, anatomy as because I uh, draw some uh, draw some windows. If you see from the medial side, the that inferior window that is the posterior inferior part of talus is devoid of any uh, important articular uh, any important critical structure. Also, just in front of the medial malleolus, this area, if you follow my cursor, this area also devoid of any type of important structure. And there is a radiological triangle. Uh, one point is um, navicular bone, one point is the tip of the medial malleolus, one point is the tuberosity of the calcaneum. This triangular area is very much vulnerable for this posterior tibial uh, artery and nerve structure to be damaged. So, which part is, part is free in um, a calcaneum? The posterior inferior part or most posterior part of the calcaneum is free for putting anywhere. So, this critical triangle and the uh, safe window you should keep in mind during the wire fixation and there is a personal trick if you put your finger just behind the medial malleolus if you feel the pulse of posterior tibial artery and it draw a straight line the area just posterior to the straight line is very much safe you can put the calcaneum wire very safely in this area and i draw it for you uh, the what are the if you um, uh, if you look a uh, surface marking of the foot and what are the area safe if you uh, just diagram it at a triangle or a quadrangle you can put the wire very easily in these areas there is no vital structure is there and uh, uh, the, you should not uh, you should not have penetrated any joint area and other uh, uh, nerve area also so this window or cut uh, this triangular or the uh, quadrangle area is relatively safe for placement of the wires. So now I um, have completed the anatomical, some surface anatomy and some uh, nerve and vessel relationship in a foot. And I, I, as I told you that I will go for the cross section a little bit later. Be, be, before going to the cross section, I want to emphasize some very important thing. Frequently during the foot correction or any foot deformity correction or any purpose, you need to uh, uh, need, need some percutaneous type of tenotomy like the plantar fascia, flexor tendon and tendo Achilles. So I want to just uh, give you some ideas about some clinical details. If you see the plantar fascia, plantar fascia uh, expand from the, uh, from the calcaneum to the um, to the um, toes and like this fan shaped manner and you see that the plantar fascia is the most superficial part in the sole of the foot and it acts as a bow sting and what is just under the plantar fascia if you layer your foot you know that very very interesting anatomical concept is that in foot there is four layers so just after the plantar fascia there is the small small muscles and the branching of the nerves and if you follow my culture this area 
is just uh, entered to the TV, uh, entered to the calculation attachment. This area, more or less, safely, you can put the. Um, no, 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 uh, you can put the needles or you can uh, park you can do the parkitinous parkitinous uh, uh, fascial resection uh, this in this area very safe so uh, don't uh, don't be very um, worried or afraid of doing parkitinous uh, parkitinous plantar aponeurosis resection in case of when there is a uh, cavus foot or very tight uh, plantar aponeurosis because uh, if you do the this type of resection it will it will uh, allow you to very uh, rapid correction otherwise this tethering skin tether or this type of soft tissue tether will delay your correction and produce a very much destruction resisting force so this thing you should keep in mind and plantar fascia resection is not a very a uh, very uh, difficult thing to do if you know the all the anatomical details and um, usually this type of plantar uh, fascial resection come from the original standard procedure uh, though uh, in elizabeth surgery we put only 15 uh, uh, 15 size uh, bp bp bullet so, so that uh, we do all the thing percutaneously and you feel the tight structure and just micro resection or fractional resection of the plantar fascia. These things are very much important during the cavus correction. Another is things are when you correct a very old deformity, there is some clawing of the toes. To prevent of the clawing of the toes, there are several techniques. Sometimes you need to capsulate, uh, capsulotomy of the uh, metacarpophalangeal joint, uh, metatarsophalangeal joint, and also lengthening of the flexor digitorum tendons. Uh, this thing, just if you know the anatomy, or you can do it very precisely by simple stab incision. And other thing is that frequently we incur during uh, our uh, during equinus correction, that is the percutaneous lengthening of the tendo Achilles. And if you see from the posterior side of the heel, the medial side or medial border of the tendo Achilles is just sub, just close to the artery and nerve. How can you do it very safely? Just put your uh, the 15 size blade. Uh, if you are very much, uh, very much experienced with doing this in uh, uh, doing this in um, CTEB, but here is something different. Uh, you need a step cut type of percutaneous uh, tenotomy in uh, tendo in uh, tendo Achilles. You know that there are different methods of performing this. By I am just. Uh, what we are doing and uh, what I am used to, I am just uh, showing you. Just put um, your uh, blade just just uh, medial to the tendo Achilles and do a and go to the half of the tendo Achilles and then do a distal uh, a distal uh, transverse incision transverse cut. It is very safe because there is no vital structures there and just stress your tendo Achilles that it will slide. Uh, itself. So this type of uh, lengthening usually um, we have to do in a case of Elizabeth fixation. So I think this type of anatomy is very much necessary to uh, keep in mind during doing Elizabeth and all the uh, small percutaneous procedures. So uh, I just complete the other anatomical uh, anatomical details and I'm, I'm going to the um, main part the cross section and the wire placement before going to that I want to just uh, uh, focus on some important anatomical landmark how the foot normal foot is in x-ray and how the axis is you need not to memorize all the axis but you need not to memorize usually the calcaneum is 28 degree but uh, for your uh, easy uh, memory I want to say that it is 30 degree to the transverse plane the axis of the calcaneum, normal foot, always 30 degree to the transverse plane. And talus, how the talus is inclined? Talus is inclined around 24.5. You can say it that 25 degree. So this is the normal, normal alignment of the calcaneum and the talus in relation to the normal foot. And why it is important? 
sometimes you say that you say that the externally the foot is calcinia okay yeah the foot is the equinus but if you do a radiograph you see that the this equinus can be contributed by the many factor maybe the mid foot is breakdown so mid foot uh, also cause this uh, some form of equinus and also the hind foot the calcinium is high up so it can also cause the um, um, equinus so uh, if you have a good x ray and you have the knowledge how the foot bones are aligned in which angle then you can easily uh, easily um, just find out the importance of doing a procedure in any part when you have to put uh, more importance in the calcinium or uh, correction of the equinus or you have to just uh, give more importance to the mid foot then you can easily calculate it by if you keep in mind this type of normal anatomical axis so now i am coming to the cross section uh, you um, for uh, your um, easy memory and uh, to uh, realize it very nicely i just uh, just uh, uh, arranged my this lecture uh, is that i get some ct uh, mri scan of different level and uh, and i just uh, i just uh, correlate all the things in a single slide so i will go a little bit slow so that you can uh, easily um, easily underst understand all the things and on the um, black photograph uh, everyone is familiar uh, with this these are the mri scan of the uh, foot and ankle and um, on the left side it is sagittal coronal and 3d section where the section is and with this section i just correlate some of the paintings or some of the figures from the books that uh, we are using for reference so my first cut is just at the level of the uh, at the level of the just uh, above the level of the ankle in above the level of the ankle how the you main important uh, thing is that how the lateral medullus is arranged with the with that um, with the tibia in the uh, the uh, in the sulcus of the uh, on the lateral side of the tibia, uh, the tibia there is a gap and there is an even gap always in uh, in mri scan and other thing this is the relationship between the fibula and the tibia and from the previous lecture of dr munir uh, you know that the on the just above ankle wires we should, we can put uh, very easily by dividing this area into three part the lateral two part i am just uh, showing in the culture that this two arrow is lateral two third and you can put the wires very easily through this and if we go what are the direction of the wire can be you can put from here uh, from fibula uh, holding the fibula and exit to the tibia you can go transversely and you can go in this direction because this uh, area is more or less subcutaneous so you need not to worry about the danger of piercing the major vessels just uh, uh, be uh, keep in mind that that anterior third is dangerous so if you go a little bit lower cut uh, this cut is at the level of the malleolus to malleolus here uh, there is the thing that uh, if you uh, see the axial cut of the ankle at the level of both malleolus then you can uh, see uh, the medial malleolus and the lateral malleolus are arranged like this uh, this if you want to put the wires uh, through the uh, and uh, if you recall my lecture of the safe window that uh, in front of the lateral malleolus in front of the medial malleolus there are uh, area where there it is devoid of any vital structure so you can give, put the cross wire in the talus by this manner but you should keep in mind that just posterior to the medial malleolus there is the posterior tibial tendon and the lateral malleolus and there is the peroneal tendon so you have to avoid this and just feel the tendons and other things and then you can put the talar wire if you want to sometime talar wire we need to put in case of arthrodesis or other issue so you can put uh, this wires very safely by this manner and if i proceed a little bit and this is the cut if you just see in the left side of the where the cut is this cut is around the neck of the talus and 
what is what is look like in mri this is the talus and this is the navicular bone and if you want to put the wire in the talus you are free and you already have uh, gone through the safe window around the talus where we can put the wires and i already showed you the articular consideration and the area devoid of any articular cartilage or soft tissue around the talus you already know that so i am going to the next slide and it is at the level of yeah, i already told you that the foot structure is little bit oblique and little bit in a step like manner uh, the medial part is high up and lateral part is lower down so you have to direct your wire according to anatomical consideration if you cut uh, i um, already told you that if you cut in direct coronal then you can get some part of the tarsal and some part of the metatarsal bones but you have to be oblique to parses all the bones here if you cut like this in a oblique manner in the um, cuneiform bones then you can get the all the cuneiforms and cuboid you can fix all the cuneiform and the cuboid <coughs> in this manner why it is important sometimes you have to correct the midfoot distract the tarso metatarsal joint and other thing so you have to precisely hold the all the uh, all that uh, tarsal bone so for this region you can put the wires like this and now uh, i am going a little bit um, uh, forward to the toes that is this wire at the level of the metatars uh, fast metatarsal uh, metatarsal bases metatarsal bases but you see that i already told you that metatarsal fast metatarsal is little bit thicker but other metatarsal if you put any wire at the lower part of the fast metatarsal frequently it misses all the wires all the uh, metatarsal so uh, you have to keep all the anatomical consideration where you if you want to put the wires in the uh, little bit dorsal direction of the fast metatarsal then it will parses other metatarsal also so this anatomical consideration is crucial during fixation of the elizera wire and uh, so same thing is repeat in another another uh, view that just uh, follow the lower wires if you if you want to if you want to fix uh, the first first metatarsal at the at the, the plantar surface uh, more at the plantar ward then you miss other metatarsal if you want to fix all the metatarsal then your wire direction should be a dorsal ward so this thing anatomical consideration you have to keep in mind and other is that uh, the um, around that uh, base of the tarsal bones the bones are not in the same plane but at the distal part of the metatarsal the rcs is flattened transverse rcs is flattened so more or less all the bones and the um, neck of the tarsal bones comes to a little bit same plane even putting the wires here one important thing is that you sometimes if you want to put wires through the all the bones you have to press the metatarsal uh, metatarsal head to flatten the dome so that you can parses your wire through the all the bones what is like that this type of flattening you have to uh, push the metatarsal head to bring it in a same plane this is nicely demonstrated and you, if you follow the picture then you can you can uh, get the idea also so if i i just uh, summarized my direction of the wires so you can put the talar wire in a coronal plane it's not a very different uh, problem but if you want to put uh, you hold the uh, navicular bones and the cuboid you have to go a little bit oblique manner if you want to uh, hold all the cuneiform bones you have to go more oblique and other thing is that you cannot um, put um, a coronal plane wire in the four foot because if you put coronal plane then one base and other shaft will be in a line so uh, if you want to put the wire very securely uh, you can put a oblique manner that is and also anatomical consideration is that the fast metatarsal bones is relatively thick and short Uh, in comparison to others this type of anatomical consideration you should keep in mind during the wire fixation so these are the ideal direction in a nutshell to fix the foot and also you can fix the 
toes also when it is necessary because of in case of uh, old equinus correction or where there is claw foot i already told you you can put the wires uh, in uh, such direction so that you have to fix the uh, metatarsal phalangeal joint also on the tip of the toe to metatarsal phalangeal also these are the wire you can uh, these are the direction you can put your wires so and uh, now i am coming to some ankle tricks of assembly i complete the basic anatomy cross sectional anatomy and compare it to all the three parameters sagittal coronal and the uh, 3d uh, sections so now i am going to some ankle tricks of assembly what are the ankle tricks of assembly uh, i if you um, if i refer you to my previous lecture l2 you can uh, have got the idea of ankle center rotation i do not want to repeat you Uh, you can get all the things of what is ankle ankle center and why it is important you can uh, get all the idea from the previous lecture and now i just uh, uh, want to simplify uh, this figure for you that think that this is the equinus foot <coughs> I, i already told you that axis of the calcaneum usually 30 degree oblique Uh, um, uh, 30 degree um, oblique to the horizontal plane, and it is facing. It is in the downward direction. But in the equinus, this thing is reverse. The axis is uh, parallel <coughs> to the normal axis. Tell us, uh, calcaneum axis is parallel to the normal axis. And if you want to put the put the ring in the calcaneum for correction of the equinus, you have to consider. this type of normal angulation of the calcaneum and your direction of the ring should be in 28 degree uh, 28 to 30 degree angulation with the transverse plane i th think that this blue line is for transverse plane and this red line for the uh, this red line is for the ring direction and i request everyone please uh, unmute your microphone so that uh, the noise is uh, less and no, 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 no. Uh, sorry for uh, interruption and, uh, i request the co-host please unmute the microphone of our uh, any participant that uh, producing the noise uh, as i am in the speaker mode and what is that um, i was there uh, is that the normal axis of the calcaneum when the equinus is there it goes relatively it goes relatively uh, parallel to the plane uh, parallel to the transverse plane and you have to put the ring in a oblique manner with the parallel to the plane and how you should put the distractor and you should put the distractor in such a manner so that so that the distractor is directed a little bit posteriorly why it is important i will tell you that that the direction of the distractor is a main component to prevent the anterior talar subluxation so what will cause the anterior talar subluxation it is very much common thing if you mismatch the hinges if you mismatch the distraction rod what is tangent uh, you can get in many books that uh, you should put the um, distractor in a equinus correction in a tangent manner tangent means it's a line which touches a touches a circle just a one point it did not it do not cross sect it just touches a point so if you Uh, think the center of rotation of a, a ankle is in the la point lateral uh, to, um, just tip of the talus and the distractor should be a transient manner like a circle not crossing this if it crosses this like uh, this um, uh, picture that i labeled with cross if it crosses the the circle then what will happen if see that there is a distraction force f this f will dislocate the talus 
and uh, this is the uh, practical representation how that analysis get dislocated if you do not consider this tangent thing during your destructor placement and if it is goes just a straight destruction then there is the anterior teller subluxation you should put the destructor in a oblique manner and now i am going to some foot correction technique and how the wires you should put uh, if you, it is adduction deformity there you put must a lever uh, to block the displacement of the foot and you can put the put you correct the medial uh, uh, you can correct the adduction by by uh, by tightening these rods uh, as you uh, gone through the previous lectures how can we use the slotted rod we already discussed so another example um, four foot correction um, these two uh, wires i already told you that uh, if you want to put the wire in uh, in four foot you have to uh, remind you keep mind in all the anatomical details of the four foot and you have to put the ring also in the axis of the foot during the deformity correction what is the axis the second second metatarsal is the axis and the ring should be perpendicular to the second metatarsal whatever the wire direction is so this is a very uh, important tips during the um, during the frame assembly in foot and now i just um, draw some a pattern of calcaneum wire one two three pattern uh, you can uh, choose any uh, according to the anatomical consideration that is uh, sometimes you may need to put the olive because the calcaneum bones is very uh, very spongy bones sometimes the wire are cut out and if you put the wire in the same plane uh, um, around the calcaneum then it can also make the holes in the calcaneum if it got um, infected and sometimes to prevent this type of uh, movement or side to side movement sometimes you may not to put uh, the wires in a great direction like uh, the 60 degree or more <clears throat> and uh, usually you have to put um, uh, around 30 degree or less than 30 degree um, um, for this reason you have to put the olives also and you can put a console wire to prevent this togging effect and this will prevent the side to side migration of the ring if the angle is less and here um, another configuration you can put uh, two parallel wire and one oblique wire in uh, in um, calcaneum so um, so that the stable fixation is there because uh, in case of equinus correction there very much force is generated uh, in the destruction rod and your calcaneum fixation should be a stable one so that you can just uh, resist this type of destruction force and now i am sharing my clinical um, experience and the correlation of what the things we have just uh, learned from our previous eight lectures uh, about the ring frame assembly and anatomical consideration and this is a patient of mine uh, he is 25 years old uh, when i operated him and he uh, had a history of very bad childhood osteomyelitis <clears throat> and um, after road traffic accident and lost uh, many muscle bulk at the uh, anterior uh, at the uh, back of the leg and after that uh, he uh, developed the bad scarring and equinus and at the time of operation my patient is also married and um, i op operated him uh, at the 25 years old what i am telling that he is married i will tell you a little bit later so this is his x ray um, i always do a normal um, uh, normal leg x ray scan for right leg and it for left leg and the thing uh, sorry uh, please unmute your microphone this is noise and uh, what is that sorry i am just uh, okay that the uh, noise is less and what i am um, telling that um, in this equinus foot you see that i already told you that normal 
calcineum axis is 28 degree below the transverse plane but what uh, happened here the calcineum axis is already uh, maybe the 28 or 30 degree above the normal transverse plane and this is a very stiff and very old equinus and uh, you have to go very meticulously and the left side is his pathological part and i just uh, want to um, correlate the previous things uh, already i told that uh, this is the axis of the calcineum and this is the normal axis of the this is normal horizontal axis uh, if you follow my cursor then what is uh, happened here the normal angle is reversed to the abnormal angle and above the level of the level of the normal transverse plane so what i have done and i told you that uh, it is a place why we can correlate with the previous structure uh, this uh, patient is very uh, motivated he done all the lecture all the all the dressing with the rubber stopper and the gauze piece it is very vital thing during uh, doing elisera and this pins are placed in a very uh, meticulously and most important thing i want to show you that the placement of the distraction rod in the calcineum the distraction rod of calcineum is posteriorly directed so i am trying to make it transient to the circle of center of rotation so that the anterior subluxation of the talus will not happen one thing i want to tell you that even putting all the caution uh, together sometimes you may encounter encounter uh, there is uh, also uh, also dislocation of the talus so you go to um, a serial x ray every weekly or two or three weeks during the distraction process so that you can uh, correct that if any chance of uh, dislocation of the talus during correction procedure so the, i am telling you that even after full um, full uh, precaution sometimes the dislocation can happen so you have to counteract this it is not a very difficult issue and another thing i want to emphasize that uh, i put the toe wire for the patient and hold it with a long plate and with the ring so uh, hold with a long plate and a ring why i am showing the you uh, this i will tell you later and even during the correction is going on uh, the uh, distraction rod sometimes the distraction rod is uh, bended uh, so i uh, make it a, um, a strong on by uh, putting a slip of uh, uh, teles uh, like telescoping rod uh, and um, also uh, this uh, direction of the uh, distraction rod is still posteriorly directed and uh, you have to take the serial x ray so that you can prevent the subluxation and after removal and correction and i always put this type of splint this is very much uh, indigenous made custom made uh, uh, orthosis uh, in my place and you see uh, just two thing i want to uh, mention you that i put a little bit uh, higher up block at the uh, anterior part no, of the sole of the foot anterior part of the sole, sole of the foot so that um, the uh, recurrence of the equinus is not um, uh, did not happen and also i increase the lever arm of the anterior footwear you know that in long standing equinus in cp patient there is weakness in the anterior muscle and if you put a long lever arm then the ankle the weak muscle can work a little bit uh, with a uh, little bit comfort so that the foot stepping is good and you can maintain this for some times and this patient is very happy as i told you that the patient is married the patient got married when he had this type of bad equinus and after that his uh, wife i came to my chamber and the smile of the uh, of the patient and he, his wife just give me very peace of mind that they overcome all the deformity and uh, living a happy life 
now i uh, in my post operative extract after removal of the ring uh, you see that the calcaneal axis restored his normal position and there even it is a very old equinus even after the 25 years of this disadvantageous condition you can see the joint space is still is there this is the beauty of elizarax this is the beauty of deformity correction you have to meticulous and you should respect all the things of the biomechanics and biology and now the last tip from myself the two tip consideration the what is uh, two tip consideration uh, the two tip consideration is like that uh, uh, i told you that when there is a bad equinus the chance of flowing or bad flowing is already there you may put the wires in the toes up to the metatarsal phalangeal joint but you know that our toes are a anastomosis of the arteries if you press any part of the toe it will uh, you can uh, observe the capillary refill phenomena there but if you put the wires in a very pressurized manner and if you compress the soft tissue then this uh, this uh, compression can cause some micro necrosis around the tip of the wire so this thing you should keep in mind during the wire fixation in the toe my recommendation is that just put a, a small stab incision and introduce your wire so by this simple technique um, in foot or uh, in nail bed or uh, in finger or toes you can avoid this type of <coughs> fingertip micro necrotic hollow usually this is very common thing if you uh, do not consider this type of uh, things during is wire fixation and uh, lastly uh, this is a picture from uh, kurgan center uh, they are assembly of the foot for uh, at the end of the um, treatment procedure they are just uh, trying to remove all, all the um, assembly from the foot uh, you see that all the wires through the um, foot uh, all the to the toes and there is the, the good correction is there and how the assembly every hinge it is a work of hinge and a work of joints in case of foot and so on my clinical practice usually sometimes i just uh, uh, make a count that how many hinges how many posted uh, it needs uh, to correct a foot usually the number is uh, around 40 to 50 or 60 numbers whatever may be uh, you have to prepare with good number of different size of post during correction of your foot so i am just uh, end of my presentation so now the not the take home message now the stay stay home message respect the biology consider the bio, consider about the biomechanical fixation take care of subtalar joint i did not uh, say uh, many thing about subtalar joint but the subtalar joint itself deserve a different lecture a huge lecture can be given on subtalar joint but my advice is that mobilize subtalar joint as soon as possible it will prevent many complications of fixation um, after the removal of the frame and other thing is that don't dislocate talus during the procedure that is stay or keep um, talus in his in its mortis that is in its home and also it is very important message to all of us stay in home because the infection rate in bangladesh is gradually a going to a very bad condition and i pray to everyone pray to almighty that he keep everyone up as uh, safe and uh, free from the corona and now the ad advertisement of the next uh, lecture session next lecture will be given by the sm abdullah fracture displacement geometry and destruction osteogenesis and you can enjoy our lecture in our youtube Uh, elizar of clinic kumc ortho world or also live in the ortho tv and usually samsuludha sir from the india usually do the talks about uh, this um, uh, transmission uh, as i am uh, today is a speaker i cannot uh, find the samsuludha sir so you can uh, enjoy my lecture and all the lecture of this kurgan fellow group in elizar of clinic kmc 
and another announcement is that um, after ending the session of uh, uh, 12 uh, 24th of this month uh, we will um, upload some uh, short version of our lecture in the youtube uh, only the lecture part so that uh, if you don't have enough time you can just go through the lecture very uh, shortly and get all the knowledge and uh, i will edit some of the part of the lecture so that the some disconnection or noise issue uh, can be edited and you can enjoy the all the videos a very um, very audible manner and now my last slide thank you all and this is my kurgan group my favorite group uh, we are always together and together we can we can do many thing so um, thank you again and i am um, ending my slide show and i am going back to the participant um, and the co-host and professor mm bari uh, for discussion about today's se session thank you all thank you okay i uh, sir i just um, uh, completed my uh, presentation and uh, i am just uh, uh, i request everyone please uh, mute your microphone so that the knowledge is less uh, we can uh, we can uh, connect uh, properly and i think uh, two days the foot and ankle session is very much interesting for the orthopedic surgeons and i want the good interaction from you and if you have any question please send me in the message box or you can hands up and we can have a good discussion and before getting any question uh, i just uh, handed over the microphone to my professor bari sir uh, please uh, uh, keep uh, talking about the ankle and foot things and if you have any opinion and we can uh, uh, go back to you many times in between the discussion and uh, i now the floor is yours sir Bari sir, can you hear me, sir? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you can hear me. Yes, sir. Okay. I can hear you, sir. So, so okay, okay. Now I'd like to, I'd like to pass some comments. Okay. Yes. Dear sir. friends, Assalamu alaikum. Why? And good, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today's topic, that is, foot and ankle. is very important we stand on foot we walk on foot everything no foot no walking you should have to use the, the stretcher or you should have to use the wheelchair so thanks arif he has elaborately described everything if you think about this ankle and foot initially Uh, you will you will be you know astonished that this is very difficult and i tell you frankly if you cautiously go through the uh, all the slides that arif has showed starting from the ankle up to the hind foot mid foot and fore foot and this is very important part of the whole you know if you think about the anatomy of the human body here is overall 26 bones in the foot 26 bones and in kurgan center ankle and foot department department is so rich lot of british and american they are coming only to this to learn the ankle and foot ankle and foot and regarding the structure passing the wires he has shown it elaborately everything any disease i tell you starting from the deformity ankle foot deformity post traumatic deformities and even the clotos and oh. equinus varus cavus even you know the hallux valgus hallux varus everything you can correct if you precisely follow the anatomy and peripheral you know vascular structure if you know calcaneum we are getting lot of neglected club foot especially relapsed club foot you have done the pmr earlier late case 9 years 11 years 12 years 14 years boys when you are putting the 
requires our olives. In the calcaneum, the triangle very, very important. Start from the navicular, lateral part of the middle, and vascular area. And otherwise, you don't need to. You don't need to think anything. So regarding the food, rightly mentioned everything, hind foot, mid foot, fore foot. If you do it, nothing to be worried with ankle and foot. So my request to all the Elizabeth surgeries, try to learn this foot and you will be able to correct all kinds of deformities, even trauma. Even I tell you, the late case of Lisp sprung joint, 14 days, 15 days, or one month or two months old Lisp sprung dislocation. You can gradually correct this with Ilizaro. Lot of people are thinking about the lot of muscles, lot of joints, small joints are here. You don't be afraid of that. So my suggestion is don't think about that. This is very complex, very complex, nothing to be worried. You gradually, step by step, you try to learn and you will be able to correct all kinds of deformities in the foot and ankle. Okay? And now you can invite uh, questions or any suggestions from the our national, international uh, Elizarovians. You can ask. Thank you very much, Ari, Thank for you, a sir. good discussion, good explanation, good presentation. Okay? Thank you, sir. Uh and uh, I'm uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Nazim are you? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, I request you to uh, conduct the question answer session. Yeah, uh, there's no light. Oh, okay. 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 okay then, uh, Thank you for your brilliant uh, presentation. So I, I'm now I'm requesting Dr. Rashid Hasan Roni. Uh, I'm. Uh, watching that, uh, he hands up. Uh, he puts his hands up for a long time. Uh, if uh, you have any question, ask me or to the uh, professor Barisar or uh, have a good discussion. Rashid Hasan Roni, can you hear me? Rashid Hasan Roni, can yes, you hear sir. me? Yes, yes. Sir. What is your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, do you have any questions, sir? Uh, thank you, Dr. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Huh? We can hear you, sir. Yes. Audible. I am Dr. Rashid. Yes, hear you. I am Dr. Rashid Dr. Rani from Kushtia. Uh, uh, first of all, I uh, convey my respect to my professor, Barisha. Waalaikum Wa salam. Dr. Arif, congratulations for your nice presentation, which is uh, delivered in very much informative and palatable form. Thank you, uh, sir. Your presentation, you have mentioned and also shown, your presentation, you have mentioned and also shown uh, 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 to hold the calcaneum, to hold the calcaneum, putting a conceal wire uh, through the posterior aspect of calcaneum. Yes, sir. My question is, uh, is there any importance, uh, importance or uh, extra advantage? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. I, I, there is noise. Uh, please, uh, please complete. Okay, okay, my question is, is there any importance, any importance or extra advantage uh, except providing more stability by uh, putting that concealer? Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, I am answering your question. Am I clear? Yes, sir. You are clear. Uh, sir, uh, okay. I, um, in my lecture, um, the different technique of um, calcaneum wire fixation, uh, you see the different pattern of calcaneum wire. The, usually, um, when the it is very small in size, and you know that uh, in old um, um, CTEV, the uh, a component of CTEV is that hypoplastic heel, and sometimes trauma or other case the heel uh, may be the um, putting the wire in a divergent angle. That is the more stable configuration. You may not put that. Even if you put only the half ring in the calcaneum, then 
all the divergent or direction cannot accommodate this type of half ring a small half ring so uh, if you do not want to put olive um, my personal experience is that sometimes the olives uh, cause the reaction at the entry site because the olives we are using are just uh, melted with uh, some uh, some copper materials and ss uh, materials so this uh, junction of the olive cause the uh, skin corrosions and also the reaction there so if you want to avoid the olive uh, just put two wires uh, if it is less direction then you can put a wire uh, in calcanium from direct posteriorly like a console wire and usually it increase your stability and prevent side to side togging what is side to side togging if the angle is less the ring will just uh, um, go side by side and it will produce hole in the calcanium so you can prevent uh, this uh, by doing this type of th another three point another area of fixation or even if you put the three wires uh, like two parallel one uh, cross you also can prevent this type of um, this type of uh, displacement of the ring so uh, i think you got the answer sir and if you have anything to say you can add sir right. okay thank you thank you okay uh, thank you sir for uh, the questioning and uh, if you have any question i uh, will go for the question uh, you can send the message to me and um, dr uh, dr uh, golam mustafa uh, are you uh, amazer yes we have our uh, uh, amir hussain sir amir hussain amir hussain i am looking he is not passing any comment amir uh, sir amir hussain sir just uh, put his hands up i ask him to unmute uh, uh, sir please unmute your microphone i already unmute your microphone to personal dr arif Yes, Arif, sir. I have a question to you. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank, you. sir. Sir, please. Uh, my question, uh, two question. One question. Um, mostly we seen that um, calcaneum is a spongy bone, or yes, um, and uh, um, mostly there is a uh, pin tuck infection is more common in the calcaneum. Yes, sir. What are the measures you uh, taken uh, for prevention of uh, um, calcaneum in the pin in the calcaneum? Hmm. Pin tuck infection in the calcaneum. One. Yes. another what are the safe zone uh, uh, to put uh, the wire in the uh, uh, base of the metatarsal and navicular where there is arterial dorsal pedis entered in the foot yes sir so, uh, sir how, uh, uh, how sir uh, <laughs> any thing to be added sir no okay 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 okay, okay sir uh, i am just uh, for your uh, thank you for your nice question the pin tuck infection is very much important thing uh, you have to avoid it uh, in all the places however the pintac infection is there but in calcaneum pintac infection is very dangerous because the bones is very spongy and um, if um, precaution should be start from the area of selection of drilling drill speed all uh, a, a wire um, configuration okay, uh, wire configuration and also the um, also the direction of the wire mm -hmm. in, in fixation uh, in calcaneum yes sir bolchi rakho bolchi rakho direction of wire direction of the wire that is if you put the two wire in a very a small angulation and in a same plane then this two wire during the drilling of the wire it will cause the also the destruction of the bones if it is passes very close Ali, uh, one after another, and when there is the side-to-side -side movement of the wire in the ring, this wire will produce the hole. This uh, low configuration wire act as a cone and produce the hole in the bones. For this reasons, if you just put a another plane wire, uh, like a console wire or even a another direction wire in the safe zone, then you can avoid this type of fixation. Uh, this type of uh, infection formation uh, in case of calcaneum and uh, you have to be very meticulous in wire direction and also the configuration of the wires and also the post operative caring of the uh, wire pin tuck uh, it is also very important for prevention of uh, uh, infection in the calcaneum 
and your second question is that sir um, if you go through my lecture uh, i put a line from the both the medial medullus to the anterior wave space of the uh, first wave space of the toe <laughs> and, uh, if you um, usually the arterial dorsal speed is just deep through the first um, just at the beginning of the first uh, uh, intermetatarsal space okay. so if you just um, uh, keep in mind the pulse and the keep in mind the anatomical just uh, anatomical area of the wire to process the bones then you can easily avoid the arterial dorsal spedis it is not very uh, difficult because it is very superficial uh, you can uh, all, is very easily you can avoid it sir sir uh, uh, sir do you have okay. any uh, any complimentary question you can add sir okay thank you thank you thank, thank you thank you sir and uh, i am seeing that uh, dr uh, rashida san uh, have a second time he puts his hands up uh, rashida san uh, do you have any, any question rashida san sir yes, yes sir i have one more question sir yes sir what is sir yes sir i have one more question yes, sir, can please. i ask you yes sir definitely yes sir please okay in your presentation you have mentioned uh, there are tons of uh, talus dislocation of talus Yes, sir. Uh, my question is why talus can dislocate it, and uh, how? I uh, mean, uh, why why talus can dislocate it uh, regarding uh, ankle surgery? Uh, uh, thank you, sir, uh, for a nice question, uh, sir. Uh, uh, this is a very um, interesting thing. Uh, you should every uh, laser of surgeon should know uh, if you mismatch the hinge. if you put a direction if you put a distraction in a very wrong manner then it can cause the most commonly the anterior uh, subluxation of the talus even the talus can be subluxated posteriorly also but common is the anterior subluxation and usually when you put the distraction uh, if you uh, remind your knowledge from your intermediate knowledge is that there are force vector there are resultant force of Uh, uh if a um, force act on a surface it can uh, compress the um, force in different direction and the resultant force in a particular direction usually when the distraction is working on a ring there is a force act uh, towards the calcul towards the talus this force uh, if you go through my lecture uh, and slide uh, you see that there is a f3 uh, force that acts on the talus this f3 force if it is more then it can push the talus in the anterior direction so this is the reason why the talus usually dislocated and if the talus is dislocated the patient usually complain very severe pain uh, uh, he, uh, he can um, the patient can uh, tell you that sir oh, i am okay for the last few days but my pain increases a very um, um, a very upper limit for the last few days then you go for the um, x ray and uh, another clinical point is that usually this type of dislocation or this type of over distraction can also increase the foot swelling the sometimes the foot swelling during the distraction process is also indicate that your distraction force is disproportionate and something bad in the talus so by this uh, uh, manner you can prevent and keeping always put the wire uh, put the distraction rod usually in posteriorly directed so i think you got the answer if you have any complimentary question sir you can add sir no sir okay thank you sir okay thank, thank you, you for participation and um, uh, i think uh, sir uh, we can go uh, some foreign uh, participant uh, to <coughs> have their uh, comments about today's uh, presentations and uh, i am uh, unmuting the uh, microphone of uh, dr madhu s ghali uh, please introduce yourself and if you have any question comments or if you want to uh, communicate with the participant you can do that sir please unmute your microphone i already unmuted it madhu s ghali sir can you hear me sir hello sir can you hear me sir so i think uh, if uh, i get any hands up mark uh, from the, my list 
a participant i can go uh, to him directly uh, otherwise i am uh, going to dr nazmuluddin shetu and dr yes, uh, uh, gulam mustafa for um, comments of the overall session and <coughs> i will go back to my professor mukakarul bari uh, for um, uh, for ending speech and uh, comments and advice and teacher invitation i am going to uh, dr uh, nazmuluddin shetu Uh, Shetu sir, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I am. Uh, yes, I am yes, saying. Sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your brilliant presentation. Actually, uh, you presented it very details. I think, huh? and uh, you also mentioned the uh, placement of wire, placement of ring, and uh, also the geometry of the foot uh, very nicely. Huh? Thank you for your presentation. And uh, last of all, I just. Um, uh, For, uh, for uh, uh, my clearance, I want to uh, ask you a simple question. Yes, sir. When there is any uh, mid uh, foot equinus, yes, sir. But calcaneum uh, and uh, the talus in normal position. Yes, sir. And do you like to fix the talus with the uh, tibial ring or the uh, half ring for the calcaneum? Which one you do better? Think. Sir, yes, sir. I understand question. It is a nice question, sir. Uh, usually, um, our common belief. Uh, I in my lecture, I already told you that our common belief is that uh, calcaneum uh, equinus deformity can only happen in calcaneum uh, or in ankle. It is not true. Uh, if you um, just meticulously, um, meticulously observe the X-ray of a paralytic foot or a deformed foot. usually the deformity is multi directional and even the calcaneal de uh, equinus deformity can happen in the hind foot and cause also can happen in the fore foot also that fore foot is if the mid foot will break usually what happens in cavus foot what happens in paralytic foots that is the mid foot it break it hind foot is okay all the parameters and all the things are okay but the mid foot a uh, break uh, in a certain manner it's uh, just it gives you a false perception that it is a equinus deformity and uh, your question is that um, uh, do do you fix the um, calcaneum or talus during the this type of mid foot mid foot uh, uh, correction of equinus yes. usually my recommendation is that if you increase the lever arm to resist the uh, correction force it is always um, always advised to you can go uh, you can do so if you mm, hold the calcaneum and talus uh, in case of mid foot equinus then it will increase your lever arm for holding or stability of the frame and you can easily easily manipulate the fore foot because your base is very strong and you know that i already told you that uh, the anterior subluxation is a very common phenomenon but the posterior subluxation also can be happen if you do not hold the all the interconnected joints of the foot in a very secure manner so i think my advice is that even if it is a if it is a simple uh, deformity if it is very correctable uh, yeah, very easily then you can sometimes you can put only uh, four foot frames and uh, with uh, the leg uh, frames it can you it can be done but you have to very meticulous about any dislocation is there or not but my advice is that just hold all the bones so that your correction lever arm is more and more strong i think uh, sir, you. Uh, you got the answer sir okay thank you thank you okay sir then uh, uh, please pass your comments about session because we are uh, going uh, uh, at the end of the session and um, from uh, you i will go to professor yes, barisa uh, 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 it's a brilliant presentation and it will, it will i think it is a um, um, it is a <clears throat> it is a very much helpful for those who are doing ankle or uh, four foot uh, foot search for uh, foot injury they will take the tips and uh, tips all sorts of information they can get from in your lecture thank you for your nice lecture okay thank you uh, thank you sir uh, now i am going to professor mufakkarul bari 
And no. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. No, yes, no sir. question. No discussion. Uh, Finish sir. everything. Uh, yes, sir. Already we are just uh, one and a half hour. Half hour already we have covered. Oh, told you me it's already gone. Okay, okay. Yes, How many foreigners? Foreigners, I am looking one, two, three, four. Four already listening. Yes. Three sir. Nigerian, one, one Indian, one, one Nepal. Five. Usually, okay, thank you very much. Now, huh? Nigeria, it is working our sir. Uh, mm. I don't know whether the Saturday. Now, now 11 in the morning there. 11 in the morning, sir. 11, yes, five hours different. Yes, sir. I know, I know. Sir, uh, please uh, conclude the session and have you. Thank you very much, Arif. Yes, sir. For a, a good discussion, good presentation, uh, and uh, most of the Elizarians, they have participated. And I am also happy. I enjoyed your lecture. And those who are doing Elizarov, for food surgery, I am telling you, I don't know whether you have gone there or not. British Americans, even Koreans, they are frequently coming to Elizabeth Center to learn the food. And there are a lot of things that you cannot do. Even AO group, if you see the book of the AO group, they already mention all the time the Elizabeth technique. And regarding one, I have forgotten, passing the wires in the toes for preventing the clawing. When you have a severe club foot, relapsed, neglected club foot, one a 0.5 millimeter wide C foot. And frequently I always do that. Shetu and you have already you have seen and that then you can when you are giving distraction backside, you can prevent the further clawing. For that you should have to go the, you should have to pass the wires. One millimeter or 0.5 millimeter. And other things for cavus. You mentioned a standard operation or plantar otomy, you call it plantar otomy. A tenotomy, double step tenotomy. Two finger breasts from the first one, second. You have shown from medial side or from lateral side. If you're expert, you can go from the medial side. Then, and gradually, you can correct. Slow, gradual, controlled, coordinated, stretching gives you the full, beautiful correction. Even fibrous tissue, you can gradually lengthen. The surgery that you've done after the PMR, and then, as for example, long period passed, nine years, 11 years, and more than that, if you do surgery in that age, you are inviting additions. Again, you are doing surgery, you are inviting additions. To prevent that additions, that reserve surgery can help you gradual control coordinating whatever you like and if you apply the differential distraction of the bones you can gradually correct so uh, nothing to be afraid if you do illusory surgery even if you prick the vessels you go out and gradually do it tissue genesis tissue genesis skin muscle bone soft tissue nerve vessels everything you can you know convert handle everything so thank you very much again arif and participants thank the known faces i don't see any new faces <laughs> try to invite the new face and next lecture will be asm abdullah we are waiting for you he talks very good somebody told me that he talks very good and Abdullah will prepare a very good lecture. And from that day, my one is will be deformity. That will be on ninth probably. Eh? Yes, sir. Arif? Okay. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. so thank you very much. Thank you. Sir, Arif, we... thank you. Shetu, thank you, Roni, Bola Mustafa, everybody, Abdullah, and all participants. Okay, bye. Sir, sir with your permission, I, I want to uh, answer a question. Uh, it is. Uh, uh, send it. Uh, I it it, it was sent it to me by uh, doctors in the um, uh, Nigeria. Uh, mm -hmm. The question is that uh, I think you uh, can also see in the. Um, uh, oh, it is private uh, question. Uh, who is, will be the? Uh, will you prefer to do fast uh, in a fifty years old with dislocation of the ankle for three years of duration? Yes. Yes, and uh, yeah. 
now having a severe equinus uh, and hot you uh, you also need to do arthrodesis so uh, uh, this is a question from nigeria a good friend adel kunle abe janjo and he already sent me some cases of open fracture for my opinion a couple of days before and now his question is that uh, a very uh, old neglected 3 years old erosion equinus deformity whose dislocation of the ankle is 50 years old and uh, sir uh, you don't mention the skin condition and if any comorbidities like diabetes or other things so uh, otherwise uh, it is uh, it is uh, though it is not said so i think that it is normal and my advice uh, is that um, in this case usually this 3 hours uh, duration of uh, this old age and i will prefer to go for the um, arthrodesis in the patient and arthrodesis yes before yes. that you should have to status of the talus yes sir Tingenium uh, T ninety nine. Go for uh, CT scan. Whatever the three three years old. Yes. And arthrodesis is at the age of fifty. You can do that very easily yes, by Elizarov technique. Yes, sir. Definitely, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to go for the uh, for the uh, CT scan and other uh, workup. And main thing is that um, if uh, you are uh, you have to do uh, some sorts of um, opening of the ankle and. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you have to uh, cut the part of the uh, the devitalized part or the most porotic part or or the, the loses bone fragment and you have to put the elizera uh, and the compression of the part between the talus and the uh, talus and and uh, and the tibia uh, will be very good one and other thing is that if you have as my professor told you that uh, if you encounter any Kind of avascular necrosis, even the some part of the talus is already uh, absorbed. Uh, if these things uh, happened in this your uh, situation, then you also uh, can um, put a, um, a proximal osteotomy in the uh, a distal um, corticotomy in the tibia, and you can uh, go for bone destruction and um, also bone transport to get good union. Sir, uh, this is my uh, opinion. Do you have anything to say uh, in this uh, relation, sir? Denude, lower end of the ear. At your, you told you, denude the lower end of the tib uh, tibia, upper end of the denude the upper end of the talus, and both malleolus, and then five degree ankle dorsiflexion and a little bit virus. Fix it with the lizard. Very simple. You don't need to put any hardware inside. Okay. Okay. Yes, thank sir. you very much. Thank yes, you. Sir, uh, sir uh, he already sent some uh, complimentary question that uh, uh, the uh, tendon Achilles is very short, uh, so need not to elongate uh, tendon Achilles and distract the uh, ten, uh, tendon Achilles. Uh, he al already mentioned. Uh, my advice is that uh, if you just open your ankle, ankle mortis, and uh, just uh, freshen the uh, surfaces. And there will be a decrease of the length of the uh, tibia also, and some part of the uh, talus also. And usually, this uh, resection usually cause you to get spaces for the correction of this type of equinus. Bone shortening can <laughs> give you the space, so it is not a, a big problem. Usually, you do not need to any type of um, um, uh, any type of tendon lengthening in this. Uh, gradual lengthening uh, or distraction <coughs> tendon Achilles uh, in this situation, and but if you need anything uh, like percutaneous tenotomy, and if anything is uh, just uh, preventing you for uh, dislocation correction, you can lengthen it. It is not a big issue, uh, but you do not need to do it gradu uh, gradually. You can do it acutely uh, if the condition is favorable. So I think you get the answer. Sir, now I'm okay. concluding the session. session, sir. Mm. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. For being with us and um, inviting you for tomorrow, uh, our session with our uh, Dr. ASM. Day after tomorrow. Day after yeah. tomorrow. No, sir, tomorrow, sir. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. tomorrow. Seven. Okay, okay, tomorrow. Thank you. Tomorrow, sir. Thank you. Okay. okay. okay.
Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Feel now. Waalaikumsalam. Warahmatullah.